agenda really has been a mainly go through. So Michael and I um, got together and um, tried to kind of put the outline together. We are discussing about um, basically based on everyone's um, input, we, we think we have a, a good foundation to start writing up what the reference architecture would look like. Um, and, you know, we, the best way we think that to go forward with this is just like to have a couple of folks. Uh, I put out a message earlier this week to, to ask volunteers and thanks for all those that um, volunteered to put in your time. So we'll be going through a little bit about this and how we're going to do it. Uh, there are some discussion points that we still want some feedback on um, from all the folks on the call. So that will be the main agenda for today. Um, but before we get into that, I uh, want to spend just a quick um, five minutes, five, 10 minutes, just like people that have any updates, any interesting news, or you know, if, you're, if you're new to the group, just a shout out. Yep, uh, real quick, uh, so um, an update from my end. Um, so uh, the salsa, so salsa, the framework um, that Google originally spearheaded, but now it's part of the open SSF. Um, so they had their first sort of uh, community um, meeting yesterday, uh, went well. Uh, there's pretty reasonable um, uh, representation across the board, uh, folks like David Wheeler from the Linux Foundation, um, a few, you know, various uh, other companies. Um, and then also, uh, we now also have representation on the on the steering committee um, as well. So um, from that, that standpoint, I think that's a, a, a good um, piece there because it helps us in the reference architecture, right? Because as, as Salsa is being built out, if there's any questions or concerns and how this, that spec is kind of being, you know, um, developed, we, we have input there. That's awesome, yes. Thanks, Michael. I yeah. just wanted to introduce myself. Uh, I am Parth Patel. Um, I'm part of Box Boats uh, Technology, so I'm working um, just trying to learn on the you know get get involved with the open source, and you know I'm interested in the supply to secure supply chain, and I was looking into Intoto and the Tecton chains and all that kind of stuff. So happy to be here and help out any way I can. Awesome, welcome, Pat. I are you working with Cole as well? Awesome. Yes, yes, I'm working with Cole. Cool. All of us under team, Michael. Yeah, yeah. and Brandon also. <laughs> cool. Uh, all right, Any, anyone else? Uh, yeah, I can introduce myself. Uh, so I'm Remy, I just joined uh, Michael's team at City uh, two weeks ago. And I also started to play with uh, Tecton, Tecton Chains uh, in Toto. Uh, I used the demo that uh, Priya created uh, to start playing with chains, stuff like that. So I'm still discovering the technologies and uh, I hope that soon I could have a, a meaningful input. Awesome, welcome Rami. <laughs> Gonna such a coup. Cool. Um, okay, cool. Anyone else? If not, we'll go ahead with the agenda. Awesome. So, um, so based on all the previous week's discussions and all the brainstormings and all the presentations we've had, which have been really helpful, um, you know, we, we were just discussing, um, and we think that we have enough to kind of put something together. And we figured one way to do this is let's just write something and then we will see the response to it. We will, we will review it and refine it as we go. And a lot of, a lot of this is really, um, uh, what's a scoping exercise? You know, we, there are a lot of different things, there are a lot of different problems in like finding uh, a good starting point, something we can work with um, 
and so this this a lot of this um, scoping was done by Michael. Um, and maybe Michael, if, if you want to say a few words, and then we can jump into the documents. Sure, yeah. Um, so based on sort of the previous discussions, um, I just started sort of outlining a lot of it and, and just sort of um, dumping the sort of thoughts to, to page. I think largely, uh, you know, this is all based on what we've already written in the various best practices documents and the, um, the other sort of breakout brainstorming sessions. Um, but a little bit more sort of, okay, you know, this is what it should all look like, like, you know, stage one should be this and stage two and so on um, should be those sorts of things. Uh, I think, um, you know, there's a, a lot of areas where I am not an expert in, you know, especially when it comes to uh, the sorts of things like, uh, you know, identity attestation sorts of pieces, like, you know, the node attestation and workload attestation. So I'm mostly just been following uh, the documentation of things we have been looking at, like Spire, um, and just kind of trying to see like, hey, how does the community sort of look at this? Um, and and the same goes with with other components as well, like uh, CICD pipelines and whatnot. I think um, one of the big sort of uh, things that, that need to sort of be discussed um, is going to be the wording of some of these things, because since this is such a uh, relatively new, um, I don't say new field, but like since there's so much effort recently in supply chain security, uh, there's a lot of tools that are being baked out. But as um, Ava and others have brought up, there's really not a shared taxonomy yet. And uh, so a lot of the terms I might be using, you might not use those terms. That's okay. Like, let's let's have that discussion and, and let's figure that out um, because in certain cases, like as an example, um, you know, if we are looking at, let's say, tecton chains for some of this stuff, there currently isn't really um, a well, you know, a widely sort of accepted term for what tecton chains is doing, right? Um, Priya uh, has brought up like something like maybe supply chain security manager or pipeline supply chain security manager, something like that. Um, but there's lots of other stuff, you know, we, we should, um, you know, talk some of that over. Uh, and also make sure that, you know, all these pieces kind of all sort of make sense. Cause I think as we're building this document out, the other things that are going to come out of this are what are the gaps, right? What are the things, um, that when sort of writing up this flow that all of a sudden we start having questions like, actually, how is that going to work either at a conceptual level or when we actually start making the decisions on what the reference implementation is going to be? Um, so that's the stuff at the, the high level there. Um, later I can talk about any of this, this the specifics. Thanks, Michael. Yeah, so um, this is the document. I, I think it's in the meeting notes. I'm going to put it in the chat as well. All right, so... Um, I think I will do a quick run through and you know, feel free to stop, um, stop whenever about what the document layout is, uh, what we kind of envision uh, gonna be, um, the content is gonna be for this document. You know, this, this is just gonna be kind of the foundation to start building reference architecture. Um, so we'll go through it really quickly, the entire flow. And then I think we want to probably just go from the top again and revisit some of them that, you know, if we may have some uh, discussion points on or we, uh, we've identified those things as we need some clarity or need some feedback from, from the community. Um, so this is the overview. Um, overall, we have, you know, what's the document, what's the outline. Um, a lot of this is kind of borrowing from the format of the NIST IR industry um, interagency reports uh, for reference architectures. Um, so what's this document, what's the outline? Uh, describing the broader problem, which is software supply chain. And then we go into really scope down what we set out to do, which is the secure software factory reference architecture. So we'll talk about what is the secure software factory relative to the entire software supply chain. What is the scope of this? Right? Uh, what is included as part of this reference architecture um, specifically? 
uh, we talk a little bit about, you know, th this is still at the very conceptual level. So inputs and outputs of the circular software factory. So this is like uh, inputs are dependencies. Uh, the inputs are the different tasks that you run within the software um, circular software factory. Uh, outputs are artifacts. So nothing like technology specific or conceptual. We describe what these inputs are. Um, you know what what are the assumptions we make about these inputs and outputs. Uh, we talk about the different components of the SSF. Um, so as usual, again, you see like nothing technology specific, really everything still at the conceptual level. Uh, so control plane, pipeline framework and tooling, node tester, world tester, pipeline observer. Again, we have a discussion uh, more on this later as well. Um, and then we go on mapping entities to project and technologies. So this will be like, okay, for all these different components and also all these different inputs and outputs, what are some examples of the projects? And also what are, um, which technologies and which projects will we be using um, in the reference architecture that we want to build? So this will come a little bit later as we are building it. Uh, obviously we, we, we will also explain how we end up picking these technologies and why we did it. Um, and then we go to action, actions and capabilities of the um, SSF. So this is what other actions can do in the secure software factory. Um, so you know, assessing the nodes, uh, triggering a pipeline, configuring a pipeline. I don't think this is fully updated. There's a lot more over here. Um, but still everything in this section, uh, actually the mapping probably should be in appendix. Um, everything in this section really is on the conceptual level. You know, we don't talk about specific technologies. It's just like you have a component that's node tester, it tests nodes, and this is how you use it within this process of running a secure build. Um, so this is really just high level describing what the reference architecture is and if someone can take this and you know, if they have no idea what technologies are out there, they can kind of try to build a reference architecture from scratch, um, assuming unlimited resources and time in the world. Uh, so that's the idea. Um, unfortunately, we don't have that. So um, we get to the part which is prototyping the, the secure software factory. So this is really, for all these different stages of you know triggering the pipeline, configuring the pipeline, what are the different components um, that are needed for them and how do they interact with each other? Still talking about technologies, but not talking about specific implementation or specific projects. For each of the stages of things that you can carry out in this, the, the reference architecture, they will have, um, the related appendix um, sections, which will describe the actual implementation and the actual like gory implementation details of how it's done, what technologies are used, um, caveats and all these things. And as we go towards the end, it's just like additional notes about the reference arch architecture, some things that, you know, um, good information to know, you know, maybe how this, how this really to Salsa, things like that. Um, and then another important part, which is future work, which is augmenting the uh, reference architecture. So this really talks about like what are certain things that we've not really addressed um, within the secure software factory reference architecture. So other use cases, for example, uh, you know, agap use cases. We 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 don't talk about that. Uh, technology improvements. Um, you know, in this case. Um, for the example that we use here, um, you know, sandboxing the, the builds and so on, right? Um, whether using confidential computing and things like that, um, those are not included in the current scope. And then the last part of this is really, this is the secure software factory. Um, what are other parts of the software supply chain um, that we need to start building reference architectures uh, for right, so this is like we talk about securing the the build pipelines and the build, but we don't really talk about 
what exactly are the things that are running within. Right? We, we provide some guidelines, but we don't provide as much detail. So we'll say, you know, the next steps would be we'll provide a reference architecture for the things that you put in the build pipeline. We'll provide a reference architecture for, um, let's say, runtime and verif verification um, on the runtime and storage and things like that. One second, I'm just reading through the, the chat. Yeah, I think there's uh, some good questions in or concerns in chat there um, regarding sort of, uh, you know, generation of the initial keys, um, key distribution uh, to, the, to the end user, um, those sorts of things. And then the fact that maybe it appears more uh, focused on purely the pipeline. Um, so once again, like th this is still, you know, very much up for changing, right? Um, with that said, I think this is at this point, we should be like in this meeting, really being clear about where we're um, uh, limiting the scope, at least for this initial pass of the document um, and, and the reference architecture. So uh, just because, you know, obviously we can, you know, go as deep with the, you know, the we, we can keep going deeper with the turtles as, as, as far as we need to um, in, the, in the reference architecture as well. And so we, we do need to kind of figure out like, hey, what are we saying is maybe out of scope and maybe we just cite and we say, hey, you know, you should be um, using sort of secure keys. Uh, maybe we have a little, a few lines in there regarding, um, uh, you know, regarding distribution of those keys and, 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 and so on. But, um, you know, I actually kind of disagree. What, yeah. I think that without the secured distribution and establishing of identity, um, you don't really gain much from having an entire secure um, software factory that you can't trust to actually verify. And you're up your anything because you don't know who's actually running this software factory. I just really think that's a key component that we have to cover in this document for it to be valuable. I, I would sort of disagree just because I, I think that there is a level that we might say, yes, we are establishing the, you know, as long as you're establishing the identity at this level, we're largely saying these things, but the same thing can be said about, are we establishing the identity up and down the chain of the operating systems we're running for this? Are we I'm, establishing I'm different layers of, of hardware? I just mean that like you, you need to know who's actually doing these actions and and why you trust them to do these actions. Otherwise, you don't have, you know, security. You just have some kind of stuff that happened and somebody did it and you don't know why you should trust that. So uh, looking back. Oh, OK. At, maybe I misunderstood. Sorry. Looking back at uh, two meetings, I think, at the reference architecture high level diagram um, that, that we previously discussed. There's nine different, um, I guess, 11, 12 different steps described in that document, or in, 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 that, in that graph, I'll drop a link. Um, but yeah, that one, you got it. It looks like the document you have here is really only concerned with the sort of bottom right, going from build artifacts to verify artifacts. And that's sort of the, the key of my question. There's a lot more about this whole thing. Now, if, if it's, it may be valuable to have a document focused narrowly on that, I think it's just worth calling out what the scope is. And that may be the uh, Marina and my concern here is like, is it the whole thing you're trying to cover in this document or a narrow part of the pipeline? If it's a narrow part, let's just call out what's out of scope of the document. Maybe identity is not in scope, dependency, uh, verification of, of uh, software sources, all that's out of scope. Great. Mm -hmm. I, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. That that makes sense. Sorry, I, I misunderstood there. Interestingly, sorry. I, I had more of a feeling that it was the central part of the diagram that we we're just looking at that was covered by this, um, or maybe you know up to the verification part. Um, so, <laughs> I mean, I could just be wrong, or we could just you know, or maybe it's interesting to talk about it because we just don't have quite the same perspective on it. Um, one small thing to try and answer uh, Marina's point, which I, I would tend to agree with, um, that if you don't know who's sort of putting 
your inputs into the system, you can't really trust the outputs. It's fundamentally, it's true. I mean, it's, it's, there's nothing, it's absolutely true. But the thing is, you may still gain something valuable from making the box into which you're putting stuff harder to tamper with. I mean, if you go back to say like, I don't know, much more real world example, like, you know, water treatment fa uh, plant. I mean, sure, if people poison it before the water goes in, it's, it's bad. But the fact that then the, the plant is itself secure against people coming in and tampering with the machinery inside, that's still a win in itself. It just removes some places where, you know, stuff, bad stuff can happen. I, I see it a bit in the same way that, sure, it doesn't solve the problem, but it's a good incremental uh, improvement to already having that bit of the of the supply chain more secure. Um, and so I'm not sure we we don't gain anything because we don't have the identity part covered. Not necessarily. I'm not saying we shouldn't work on it or anything. I'm just saying I think we get we maybe gain more from even just this bit than than we might think. So to, to take a, a quick step back, um, so I, I agree with identity inside. Um, the secure software factory and and establishing that you know the different components of um, the software you know what what are the different components of the software factory and what they're responsible for. I think um, if you sort of look at uh, salsa and some of the other things that are sort of coming out, the way that a lot of people have been approaching the initial work is more at an establishing provenance piece and recognizing that we might be ingesting as as you meant uh, as Axel mentioned, um, you know we might be ingesting, bad code we might be ingesting you know um some of that sort of stuff that is going to take a lot of time to sort of you know figure out like hey um you know and it's going to take also a lot more effort uh long term to figure out like okay so are we talking purely about um public identities are we talking about identities internal to an uh to um a company so on and so forth and for now, I think we might want to limit the scope just purely to what's operating inside of the secure software factory. And so that's sort of things like, yes, you know, developers who are, are building this thing out and the operators who are building this thing out, as well as the individual components, like what is the, you know, um, what identity are the individual, let's say, tasks getting? I think that's definitely um, important there, but I just don't want us to kind of also talk too much. I'm a little worried if we start to say, okay, now we're going to include how, uh, you know, how does the um, secure software factory trust the the source code repository and, and so on, like that could get quite complicated, at least for the initial pass. Um, I'm, but, but that's just my, my two cents. Um, any thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I think that there's a couple of different problems, and I agree that you know making source code secure is a, is a big problem. We don't want to you know try and tackle here, but I think we can at very least at the very least um, make sure that the right people are sending the code to the software factory, or at least people within the right teams or whatever. Um, I don't think that I think that's a fairly simple first step. That would be you know it's an easy addition, and then you know obviously we can. Keep Keep things like static and dynamic analysis of that code. That's a whole different problem, right? Whether the code is good, um, but like you know, who actually wrote it and were they trusted to write the code? And wasn't this? And it wasn't just randomly injected by an attacker or some other person. I think that that's the piece that I think is an easier first step that we could include. So, so I think uh, we, we might. One, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, one thing I would like to add. I think I agree with what Marina said. Right? So. What is the root of trust here? Like we are saying, there has to be one root of trust that we can agree upon that this is what is basically verifying all the code that is coming in the, the pipeline that suffers this uh, software supply factory. I, I, sorry, I, I want to I bring the conversation back because I think we are getting too far into details when this is more mm -hmm. of a issue about, a, this is a logistical issue um, whereby we spent almost three months trying to build Kubernetes analogy. <laughs> We've spent three months trying to figure out a way that we can build everything together. And then we made very little progress. And now what we're saying is like, let's just build at CD. And then we will build everything one by one. We're not saying that anything is particularly more important than the other. 
And I think this is just, you know, we want to get something done and this is the best way to start getting something done. And hopefully, you know, we get, we'll, we will get more people on that will contribute to this and it will help further, you know, the, the reference architecture agenda, you know, in the future. Um, so I think all the points are valid and we want to include all this information and therefore we have these sections in, the, in, the, in this particular document to say, here are all the important other factors and the other components that are essential to the software supply chain. These are important. You should, you know, we need a reference architecture for this. We need to build this to the picture. Um, but, you know, this is not done yet. It'll be done in the future. So baby steps. I don't think it's really a contentious point. What's being said is let's start off the lead sprint, but the first principle that all of these things are APIs talking to each other. Are we going to have basic auth for those APIs or are we going to have MTLS between those APIs? Is chains communicating through the source code repository? If so, can we tell apart these two systems and do MTLS between them? Same with a metadata store. And given that we are putting Spire as a building block, we can use Spire in many different ways, some of them more advanced than others. We can do federation where there's different Spire deployments. We can say it's all part of a single trust domain. We, uh, Brandon, when we wrote the Spiffy book with uh, Ian Hack and you were on it, he shared his prototype of how they do uh, user SVITs at Netflix. We could bring that up here and, and leverage it there, but we really want to make it. What I heard from Eva was like, well, first off, let's, let's call, what is it that, like how big is this picture? And then I heard Marina said, no matter how big the picture is, there should be strong identity all across. I think a lot of this discussion gets resolved if the document opens with a clear uh, description of the intent of the document, what's in scope, what's going to be talked about here, and what are the things that are out of scope, maybe even what are the foundational principles that this document simply assumes but does not go into, like that you're, you know, you have identity and key management. I think that. Yep that sets the right context and avoids a lot of um, could could avoid repetition of questions like this from new audiences yeah and and i think that's like one initially what these two sections i think we want the detail is that we're not claiming to to be the entire picture and then this is a small part of like um everything else um that's it i think the feedback that we're getting is We've put a lot of these things in like the future work. And maybe the thing to do here is to kind of bring it up in the document. Yeah. I still think we're talking past each other. And that goes back to like establishing true knowledge and based off what I see in chat. Like, yes, there's people who are here because their field of expertise is image verification and signing, but like Cert distribution is very different from that, but like there's key distribution for this other abstraction layer of things. So I, I do think I'm seeing a bit of pieces where I think it is relevant, particularly for this in the case where, okay, here, what are some things that are related that we can't just abstract away from just a pure software factory outside our scope? and say that, okay, you can do this separately. We can create a nice interface that says that this is the interface that you do with key management. You know, you can detach it from there. Things that like, we can make it an input or output of the, of the secure software factory. We kind of have to address to a um, certain degree. So, in this, let, let me just give an example. So in this case, you said the inputs are um, source code dependencies. Um, I think we had, I don't remember what the task one. 
we had like tasks here, right? So we were saying like, what is the task? Um, whether the task is secure, I don't really care because I say that this is my input to my system. I will address the issue of tasks in a separate document. Now, if it's something that can be kind of encapsulated as like an input of a, or output of the, soft, the SSF reference architecture, then it's fine. We can put it in our document. But if it's something that's like really intertwined in the implementation and we can't just put it as an input and output, then I agree that we, we, you know, we need to, it, it has a place in the document. We need to address it um, to some degree. So most of us work at companies that are software powerhouses. And I don't think we need to go back and teach people how to do release engineering or how to build software. Those tasks are really well understood. Sorry, I say tasks, but not talking about these tasks <laughs> in particular. But like, I, I think what the industry, like if we want to do something above the value line and not just do another paper, it's like, oh, here's, here's this people talking about building software and they're, they regurgitate a bunch of advances in security that we should be using, but there's still no clear picture of how how is this fundamentally any more secure than we are already doing today with some of these pieces, because people do have different pieces in place and different compositions, right? But we're going to say like, hey, here's the ultimate, most secure, most watertight art, architecture of, of all of it from the CNCF? I don't think we're exactly claiming that. I think we are claiming that this is something and we also address that there will be some gaps. Um, but but I, who's we? Because we have different people with different views, right? And we're trying to, to arrive consensus on what we all want as a majority in the group. I think one of the problems we're, we're touching on is that, as we were saying, there's like multiple opinions in the group, but also there's there's two ways of approaching it. One of it is to say, here's the optimum thing that we can figure out. And the other one is to say, here's a bunch of steps you can follow to get closer and closer to something that is good. And so are we, I think my understanding was that we were aiming more to say, right, you can't do the whole thing in one go. So we're going to start with this bit and try and give you a good a good view of what a good version of this bit is while being very clear that it's only a bit it's only a part of a whole and you would need to do more and i of course i think all of us i mean i, I have a feeling i don't haven't known this group for very long but i have a feeling a lot of us are actually quite aligned in the way we approach things and it would be great to be able to say this is the optimum overall vision thinking taking everything into account we have people with many different you know specializations here that bring in a lot of interesting points. Uh, I mean, Marina was just saying, you know, if you don't have secure key distribution, you can't even trust your key. So you can't trust who's signed whatever it is. So your signatures are just basically worthless. All of that is, is absolutely true, but just how much can we actually do in, in this amount of time before, and if we want to publish this in a timely fashion. So I think that's why we sort of have to concentrate on a smaller part and be very clear about the limitations of what we're doing. That's fair, but I think the framing is very important. If like we open up with like, hey, here's the ideal end state you should arrive. And here are all the things you should be working towards. Now let's get, let us break some of that apart and, and tell you where to start. Where the scope of this is not all of it, but your ambition and your aspiration should be to get to all of these things we're talking about rather than, okay. hey, our scope is just this tiny thing Oh, and for the future, think about these things down the line. I think that's very risky. So I'm going to um, politely disagree with you, Andre. And okay. for reference, I'll point you at the paper that I've been working on. Um, I'll drop a, a link again in here. I presented, I think it was last week. Um, the scope of this is so vast that every group, and, and I've been trying to tag into as many different groups outside the CNCF, everywhere I can find it in the open source ecosystem. Um, that are looking at this problem space. Every group has a different perspective of what that overall scope is. So I do not think, uh, given the constraints that this group is operating under both your scopes to the CNCF and you have a time deadline, I don't think trying to open a paper with here's a total vision is a reasonable goal right now. 
I think it needs to start with the scope because the problem space is both very vast and nebulously undefined. There is not yet industry consensus on how to do this. So pick your scope, make a recommendation within that scope and call out what you're not addressing that makes this an achievable goal. I, I, Andre, I, I understand your point. I want that too, um, but I don't, I don't think anybody has an answer yet. And I can look at the OpenSSF as a, another sort of case study and a group trying to tackle the entirety of this problem space and deadlocking on it because there's so much here. Yeah, I think I think folks are really risk averse and there's a component of bystander effect. And yes, it's it's hard to be like absolutely right or like absolutely certain, but we can make a bet or we can make a claim and stake that claim and really advance the space, but like not describing, not by like manifesting the future everyone else has described, but the, the one that we're defining ourselves from knowing like, yeah, we haven't seen any, any measure of improvement in, in how people run their pipelines and how they harden their pipelines. And really questioning up up front, I think it's gonna be an accelerator we can do things a little non-conventionally here, right? We don't we don't have to be super lawyerly or super prescriptive of like we have to follow pre-structure formats and, and doing papers and like. But again, I'll defer to the broader group, but we could be a little bit bold here. I, I just want to also remind folks that we've had this conversation before and it ends up so. So just some context, I'm not sure if everyone has been um, here for that. So like um, initially this this entire group started with Jonathan Meadows wanting to do the reference architecture. And then we were like, oh, but let's define the entire space first. So that's, we did the supply chain paper. And I think like based on the collective knowledge of the group, that was what we came up with. Um, so I, I feel like for this, for in terms of this document, right? If we want to go back to talking about the grand vision of the software supply chain, I think those should be additions to the supply chain white paper. So, um, I so, don't want that to be duplication of information everywhere. Yeah, just, just for uh, full background there, once we were done with the paper, the majority of the group said, okay, we're done. We did a great job. This is awesome. As we were preparing to present that paper, whoever we delegated to do it, uh, I was amongst them. I said, like, wait a second, we're not done. Like, we really <laughs> need to, we need to give people a, like, code templates and examples, and probably those should be informed from a larger architecture. And we need, like, cookbooks. And people really don't piece all the things together. So, not not like to, to minimize the work of anyone but a lot of the desire and the energy and going back to people said like hey remember we're not done let's actually put the meetings back on the calendar because we're going to work on this thing but it should be from the like i don't want to go back in circles if, if we want to say and the, the consensus from the majority is like no that's too much to cover here let's just cover the existing outline as is but i am hearing concern from folks of like Let's not cut off identity. And if we're doing Spire, let's do Spire in full, not just like node at the station. Let's do, or not just within the system. Let's also impose that things calling into the system should be spiffy identified as well. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I do think um, to sort of maybe baseline um, some of this uh, to, to start off with, I do think, um, to some extent, at least the initial work that the salsa folks have done seems to be pretty reasonable as maybe a, a baseline with caveats and whatever else is that we see fit of just sort of, you know, salsa one being something like the establishing provenance of the thing, which is already a huge win um, compared to sort of what's going on today, where folks sometimes don't know if the code that they're building came from the source they just pulled from, right? You know, I think that's that's big there. Um, and then whatever kind of is needed to hit that, I think might be a reasonable thing. I, cause I, I do think we, we constantly take sort of, um, uh, 
echo Brandon there. We, we can kind of go around in circles on exactly, you know, how deep, um, you know, what turtle do we want to address first? Um, and I think over time, we can kind of continue to increase the scope, but maybe even just for like the initial work we're working on the next couple of weeks, keep it limited and see where the gaps are and then expand it as, as we see fit. I just, I just worried that like, um, yeah, I think we have had the, the sort of identity conversation before and there were some conversations on, yeah, how, how deep should the identity go? Should we be essentially identifying the, the users who are, um, uh, you know, uh, writing the code? But then there's an element of, well, would that stop us from building certain open source code that doesn't have that yet, right? Like they're, they're not providing identities for their users. I, you know, I, I don't know if we want to make that trade off and say, we're not going to support those use cases. We're going to make an expectation here that you're doing all these additional things. Um, any thoughts? So if there isn't, um, you know, we, we just talked a little bit about the intent of the document, the overall philosophy, the thinking, um, future plans and things like that. If we, if there is general acceptance of that, then I think there was some, so we're going to open this doc to commenting now that everyone has like, is kind of on the same page of what this document is, is going to be uh, the goal of this document. Um, so we'll open up this document to commenting. Um, but I think there are some aspects that we think would be good for group discussion. I think mainly being um, the, the main um, architecture diagram that we have here. It's a little bit tiny. Um, let me share my Slack instead. So, um, Michael, I'm not sure whether you want to do a quick run through of this and then we can have that talk with um, So this document, uh, once again, is, is, is uh, first off, it's, it's a little invalid after kind of re-evaluating, um, but the, the basic thing here um, is uh, there's probably a few boxes that are missing to be clear. And also there's certain other things that are not in this document, but they shouldn't be considered that they're separate. Like identity should be, you know, part of this, but it's coming from outside and coming in. But the, the, yeah, the basic idea, right, is, is we should be doing something um, at least for the initial sort of pass. I would hope the, the sort of pipeline we are running, right, is, is a fairly sort of simple and straightforward thing where I would say, at least for now, stuff like SAST and DAS scans are out of scope and yada, yada. I think right now the initial work is just, hey, can we start to establish provenance that the code that we're pulling down and the dependencies we're pulling down are actually the source code and dependencies that are included in the output artifact, right? Or we're part of the build that generated that artifact. That to me, I think, and and to be clear, I'm, I'm still open for, for um, uh, you know, in, a slightly different sort of scope on that. But I think even just establishing that provenance piece is, is already a huge win because a lot of folks don't know that today, hey, yes, that whether or not the source code they downloaded led to the, the artifact that they built. So um, on that front, you know, this sort of just shows a very, very simple uh, build here, right? Where, hey, you're fetching the code independencies, right? Um, that task should have an identity associated with it. Um, I'm making an assumption that that identity is, you know, however the keys get there, you know, that's sorted out. Um, that's sort of out of my wheelhouse. 
Uh, but the, the basic idea there, right, is, is assuming that sort of task is there. Um, you know, the identity is attested to, uh, sorry, the node is attested to um, that is running the thing. The workload um, identity is attested to. Um, and then uh, something like, uh, you know, uh, the pipeline security manager, something like chains would go in and um, sign, uh, you know, would, uh, would capture the metadata and sign the outputs um, and sign the inputs and outputs. And then that would all get published to a uh, metadata store. So just to be clear here, I realized that though I kind of combined the workload of tester with that pipeline security stuff, that should probably be kept separate. But that's really the only thing that I was, I was trying to kind of write up here just to kind of keep it simple of like, what should the, the expectations here be? And once again, I'm open to changing the scope, but my thought is just, at least for now, um, we should be looking at, um, you know, uh, there is some source code that comes in and that source code gets built and we should be establishing a provenance that the, the source code and the dependencies we downloaded are the source code and dependencies that ended up uh, throughout the build. And that already, I think, helps um, with some of the sort of, you know, if you want to say, okay, well, what, what is the, what's the so what to the end user? The so what to the end user is, well, now you know, in the very least, um, you have increased confidence that somebody has not replaced the source code midway through. That somebody has not, um, you know, if you did download a bad dependency, you could always go back and audit against it and know what builds included that bad dependency, things like that. Put it back, Adi, we will, Mama will come now. Hey, Michael, that, that workload of tester, what is that? Like, and it's what criteria is it testing the workload on? Sure. So I mostly like, given that um, I'm still relatively new to all the different things there, I mostly just sort of followed the Spiffy Spire stuff, where okay. the way that they're the way that they're setting it up is that the workload of testers is essentially just a process. Sorry, it's a, it's attesting to the identity of a process that's running, and so okay. that process that could be running is something inside of a container. That that's kind okay. of all I was doing there. But I do admit that I, I realized I kind of got a little mixed up in the middle there where the workload of testers kind of doing some extra stuff here. Whereas I kind of, I would expect the um, sub, the stuff like chains, the, the pipeline supply chain uh, manager would be taking care of some of that as well, where it would be taking, the, you know, would be signing the metadata based on, you know, and with the idea there being that Assuming that the node identity has been attested and the workload identity has been attested, attested, then you can probably trust yeah. somewhat of what the the uh, what chain is telling you. Okay. Now, Inspire the process that performs node attestation is the same process that performs so workload can attestation. I, can, I, can I interject here a little bit? I, I for this reference architecture, like I know, like it's difficult to have technologies try and like to prevent technologies for influencing um, the conceptual view. But I think the, the idea is that this view should be in the ideal world where you can just get a technology for the specific component. Uh, what would kind of be the rules that you're fulfilling? So one technology can fulfill multiple roles or vice versa. Uh, I just don't want us to get in like tunneled into well, let me let me finish what I was going to say, which is conceptually, you're, there's one attester. So uh, if we collapse or if we remove or we shift left the attesters and make them out of band uh, and draw a big box around them to the little box, it will be more representative of, of like the function or the logical component that performs at the station. Logically, these are the well. Logically and implementation, these are one and the same. It was just my piece of feedback. In terms of implementation, attestation is backed by things which are really uh, conceptually and business-wise, in my experience, outside of the software factory. 
right? The attestation service might be fundamentally a third party like Intel providing something that's not part of your software factory. It's a resource you rely on. I think that's your point, Andre. Yeah, somewhat, but you would have this, this service that can be a public endpoint or it can be like a substrate of your infrastructure, but it would be better representative to, to have that like as well, the way we have SDLC services is a separate box. If we move those, I'll take a step at, at drawing it and show it for like review. And then we draw the lines, but also collapsing like workload of tester and identity of tester into no. single like a tester nope. service. I think those are fundamentally different services, both in function and in implementation. So I, I recognize that, you know, in, in this specific case, like if we're looking at something like Spire, Spire handles both of them. And to be clear, I think this kind of highlights, I think one of the big gaps that, that should be addressed, which is it's sort of a, the, what Ava's brought up multiple times, uh, the taxonomy gap. Um, you know, Spire calls it certain things, um, Chains calls certain, you know, Chains also talks about attestations and it's unclear, you know, and, and in Toto talks about attestations and are those attestations, do they all have to carry the same meaning? I would argue no. probably not. Um, so uh, we're we're definitely at a, in a place where we should in the very least, yep, yeah, let's, you know, if these things are unclear in the community and nobody else is, is doing this work, um, either we should participate or make a call uh, on, on what these things should be, you know, the, the more generic terms on these things. That, that that's, that's my pitch at least. I'll add to that. I've seen, uh, just looking at this document, attestation used in four different ways, human identity, hardware identity, or node identity, workload identity, and artifact identity. And attestation can be performed on each of those in different ways or in similar ways. I've seen proposals for a lot of spectrum here. Let me make sure I captured that in a second. Yep. Uh, does anybody else have any sort of thoughts about that general problem, like I don't want to um, criticize anybody's use of any of these terms, but I know for myself, I'm trying to mostly just use what I'm seeing other people call it, even if at the, at the end of the day, it sort of makes things a little less clear because without that, there's really nothing to kind of um, tie it back to at least today. Um, so I'm curious, like, you know, anybody have thoughts on, on uh, sort of the the wording that's used, like, because I see a lot of folks talking about assertion versus attestation versus claim versus um, just signing it, right? Uh, so, so I, I'm curious if if other people are seeing this problem or if they think no, no, like, like it's it's okay. I I would avoid claim because of the verifiable claims wording of self sovereign identity and the fact that that's like an IETF, is it? No, it's also W3C um, group. So I, I would leave that one alone. Um, and I think I, th I think I might might have guessed what you're about to say, Ava, about the attestation. That's strongly, I mean, we've both done quite a bit of work with T's and, you know, <laughs> sort of confidential computing. And that's very tied to sort of how you prove in that, in that world sort of that a workload is running properly on, you know, genuine trusted execution environment. So what does it leave us with? <laughs> um, but then again, it's 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 with four minutes from the end, and I don't want to kickstart the whole nomenclature, you know, and and conversation. But it is it is a very good one. I'm starting super, to wonder. Super if brief, have... it is about emitting proof. You said emitting proof, and I think that is the key thing. But depending on the context, it's done differently. We we might have to start the document with you know a short note a short note on on terminology, and this is how we use these words, and we are well aware that everybody doesn't agree, but we're just trying to do our best to make sure that we you know, carry meaning properly. Mm -hmm. I think that's a very pertinent thing to do. And folks that I'm chatting with in other groups are beginning to do the same thing. Um, we do have some references from the ITF for the meaning of words like claim and attestation that are not dissimilar, where the ITF is so persnickety about their wording 
they'll often say a hardware-based attestation. And this group might say, we're using the same definition, but we're not requiring the hardware base. For example, I'm, I'm not uh, prescribing what, what you know, CNCF group does, but that's the kind of thing that I would suggest. Start with your definition, your lexicon, have references, call out the differences. So anyone who's coming into this from other backgrounds can find their way easily. So we just we are almost out of time. So I just wanted to um, end it with just talking about the action items. Um, so everyone is welcome to to comment on this document. I'll be sharing the link. Please request access, and we will add you as a commenter. Uh, general rules apply where like comments are general. If you see a thread talking about the thing that you know you want to discuss on the try console that chat is still having like a hundred different ones. Um, and I think right now comments probably will be easier to manage than uh, just additions here and there. Just because they generate a lot of a lot of clutter on the document. Um, other than that, I think we we saw like the other parts of the document that we can start working on, like the outline, the the um, you know starting to build upon the other sections. So I know we asked for a couple of folks to to, to volunteer to help out. So we'll be um, scheduling something separate for that. You know, it'll be kind of like a writing session, um, just to get more of these parts of the document fleshed out. And obviously, once we get more comments, we can start building onto um, the main content of the document. All right. Um, any other last minute thoughts? If not, I think we will end the meeting for this week. Awesome. Thank you, everyone.